Hey YouTube, gonna put a new starter motor on the pickup truck. Uh, it's a uh, Powermaster um, 9612, and uh, it's lighter, smaller, more powerful, and dress draws less amperage than the factory GM starter. So I've got them both right here. Here's the factory starter on the small block Chevy. And yeah, it's pretty substantial. And here's the uh, Power Master um, replacement. And yeah, it's it's half the weight, I'd say. And the pro there's nothing wrong with this starter. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be replacing it. But um, it's supposed to have this bracket that mounts here and, and screws in the block to support all this extra weight. Um, and I can't put the uh, bracket on the block because the header covers it. And I bought the truck that way, but uh, I, I just don't feel good about only having these two bolts. These are the two offset bolts that bolt up into the block holding all of this weight. So uh, I went ahead and invested in this Power Master. But uh, the reason I'm doing this video is because this is not a standard installation where you just bolt it in and, and the gears line up. The gears don't line up in my particular case. And I'm gonna put it up in the truck and show you why and what I'm doing to remedy this. All right, I've got the starter motor, motor bolted back in here. And uh, even though the original had these two, um, my block actually did have the uh, threads for this one. So I have another bolt on order. So I'm gonna put all three bolts in when I'm finished. But um, the first spec is the difference between the pinion gear and the flywheel gear. And they want between 0.1 and 0.25 inches. And uh, I don't know if you can see that, but I've got about 3 sixteenths of an inch, which is right in between the spec. So my distance there is good. Now when this gear comes out, they want it to be about three quarters of the way into here. All right, um, this is the surface that needs to be milled. This is the surface that goes up against the block. So if I mill this down, the starter goes up and it closes the distance between the two teeth. I've already milled 10 thousandths off of this. And I think, and it, and it moved it a little bit, but I think I need a total of 100 thousandths milled off of this to, to get to the desired results. And uh, yeah, the desired results are, um, yeah, 20 to 35 thousandths between the two teeth. So, uh, to get this aluminum block off, you simply remove these two screws and then it, it pops out. So, I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, when I milled the um, ten thousandths off of this, I used a belt sander, which I'll show you in a minute. And uh, I used the caliper. And although I'm trying to hold this flat against the belt sander so that it sands evenly, I periodically check different portions of it with the caliper as I'm sanding to make sure that, you know, I get it within, you know, at least at least a few thousandths of an inch um, even when I'm belt sanding. But let me go down to the belt sander and uh, let's take off uh, another chunk of metal here. All right, here's the belt sander I'm gonna be using. And, uh, I will hold the uh, piece while the belt sander is going and I will continually measure it until I get about a hundred thousandths of an inch off. All right, I got a hundred thousandths milled off of this. By the way, I was using a number 36 grit sand and belt and um, <clears throat> Here's the uh, spacer ring that you can adjust in case the um, gap between the starter pinion and the uh, flywheel wasn't correct. You can 
adjust this, but again, that was 3 16 gap and it was perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in and see what my, uh, it's gonna move the starter motor up. It's gonna make the gears mesh tighter and we'll take a measurement and see how close we are. I just quickly mention another feature of this Power Master is that you can rotate this mounting block uh, in case you need to reorient the um, wire lugs or if the header's hidden anywhere. Uh, you do have a lot of flexibility with this uh, mounting bracket. All right, good news. Uh, this is my 60,000 drill bit. I can't get it in there. And uh, again, we want to get 35 thousandths max. So uh, let me get a smaller drill bit and see what happens. All right, my 40 thousandths drill bit. Still fits in there loosely. So. I'm going to shave a little bit more off. Well, uh, the um, 40 thousandths still fits in there. It's fairly snug. The 30 thousandths, which is what I'm shooting for, is pretty loose. So I'm going to take another five thousandths off the top of this. Okay, here's an interesting situation. I took another few thousandths off of this and the bolts are tight right here, but they're bottoming out. So temporarily, at least, I'm gonna put a few washers on here to get this thing up. Okay, I've got a number 72 drill bit, which is 0.025, 25 thousandths. And this gear has to be between 20 thousandths and 35 thousandths. And this 25 thousandths now fits in there snugly. So I think I'm good right here. This is like right in between. Now what I'm gonna do is rotate the flywheel and check it in three or four different places because this flywheel is probably not perfectly round. All right, so I rotated the flywheel several different positions and the gap between the teeth is between 25 and 30 thousandths. The spec is 20 to 35 thousandths, so well within spec. I ended up having to shave 0.2 inches, almost a quarter inch off of the top of this, uh, 200 thousandths to get this to move from 70 thousandths, which was the original gap, down to the 25 thousandths it is now. By the way, this is a stock Chevy block. Um, I'll put the uh, block serial number in the, or the model number in the notes, but uh, I hope this helps someone. Uh, it's an interesting exercise. I think it's worth it. All right, test startup and test drive. Starter sounds good. Thanks for watching.